Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on, uh, what are we working on? <laughs> I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. Let's see if I can find the name of it somewhere. Christmas Greetings, there we go, Christmas Greetings Stamperia. And um, we're, I don't know what page this is going to be yet. So you'll have to look for that in um, in the title for the video. Um, but this is the first page I'm actually making. So this is build one. And I don't know what page it is. It may wind up being page one, but I'm not sure. Okay, we're going to start with two ten and a half, ten and a half by six and a half. So this is ten and a half inches. I'm sorry, ten by six and a half. Two, ten by six and a half. You're going to score a half inch along the six and a half inch side, half inch, and you're going to have two of those. One's for the top and one is for the bottom. And the cut list is in the description. Click on show more. You will see the um, cut list and then um, the material list as well. So the number of paper packs that it's going to take to complete shoot the album that didn't go on straight so we're going to do over before I burnish although it really wrapped pretty good there we go. let's try that one more time okay again you're going to do two of these they're going to go flush mount top and bottom. Okay. Sorry, I hit the cord. I'm pretty sure that made the camera shake. Okay. So we have 10 and a half by six and 10 by six and a half, sorry, 10 by six and a half on the top and the bottom. And then brush these into place. There we go. Now on the bottom of the um, signature pocket page, we're going to put a four, four, by 11 inches, 4 by 11 inches, you're going to score three sides to make a pocket. And it's going to go on the lower flap, flush with the bottom. in the pocket so you can see. There we go. So it's going to be perfect for two four by six or slightly larger than uh, four by six, maybe four and a quarter by six and a quarter uh, photo mats. So that goes together. Now we're going to keep this nice and tidy with a magnet right here. I'm going to use my pencil to draw a quick reference line here. So I know I have between this edge and this line to place my magnet. So I want to try to put it somewhere in the middle so there's no interference or opportunity for the magnet to be exposed on this side. hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to try to get this out uh, quick, quickly because I know if you're working on Christmas gifts and you want to do albums, you've got to get going. We uh, just hit October and 
you know, it takes some time to put the album together, but really when you're doing photo placement, that's really where the time goes. Okay, so that all closes nice and neat. And then on the top of the outside or the upper flap, we're going to put a left and right hand flap. And it's going to um, be, actually, let me think about I'm going to think about that for a second. I was thinking maybe I put them on the inside, but no, I'm going to put them on the outside. Um, I'm thinking about pattern distribution. So these are going to go flush left and right. So do dry fit from top to bottom and make sure they're going to fit. Um, as you know, when you add score lines, especially um, since this score line is on the top and this one's on the side, there's a chance I might need to trim just a tiny bit off of this. So I'm going to look at it. And it looks fine. <clears throat> mm. I'm going to add this here so I can actually see the edge. It's always good to have a contrast piece of paper handy for that reason. Okay, and we're going to add one on the other side. I forgot to tell you the size. These are five and a half by six, five and a half by six. You're going to score a half inch on the five and a half inch side. I'm going to do two of those. So it'll, once you score and fold under, it'll be five by six, five by six. So I'm going to go down this way. There is a slight overlap. If that bothers you, you have an opportunity to trim it before um, before you place it. I mean, it's teeny tiny. <coughs> okay, so that's going to open up so you can see there's tons of room for photos. These are large photos, um, a pocket, and then this whole 8x10 um, is open for photos. So this is um, really meant for um, collages or large format photos. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put two diagonal pockets here. And these are five and a half by five, five and a half by five, and you're going to score a half inch on the five inch side and a half inch on the five and a half inch side. You're going to do that two times. It's going to go like this. So I have not added my diagonal yet. It can be any shape you want. Um, so you start with this um, panel but you do want whatever the shape is. You can start anywhere along this line, but you're going to want to stop here. Um, well, you don't have to. You don't even have to do that. So the whole purpose is these are diagonal, or can be. So they can be diagonal like that. And then we're going to place something inside of it to hold these two flaps in place. So. This is small enough to fit in your die cut machine, so you can do a nice decorative border here, or you can cr cut a straight diagonal. You could even do like a half moon, um, which I think is what I'm going to do. So, And I'll tell you what size circle I'm going to use. So I'll use some magnets to hold this down, uh, or, or temporary tape to hold this together. And then I'm going to create a half circle here. And then you're going to want to keep track of the size of that circle because you're going to need to recut whatever um, you lay on top of here as decorative paper. Okay, so I'm getting um, my, my radius cutter here. And then I'm going to get out uh, some temporary tape. Or, you know, what I think I'll do is just fold back a little bit of this and have it hold it in place. Again, five and a half by five. Score half inch on the five inch side and a half inch on the five and a half inch side. And they should sit side by side. Should go a little bit. Like so. Okay. Now I'm only putting this, taping it down so I can cut my semicircle. So I think I want my circle to go start one inch in 
here and then end Let me see how big that is. I might have to pull it in an inch. So I'm just going to do some estimating here. So if it's this is my midpoint, roughly within I don't know a centimeter. Keep shifting on me. There we go. Roughly there, then this would have to come out. That's too big. So, okay, I like that. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to have it come in two inches. Okay, and what I was doing is swinging this arm down to see, you know, how far down it was going to go. It can go all the way to the edge, but I don't think I want it to. I think it'll have a little bit more structure if I stop it. So now I am going to use some temporary tape up here, hold it all in place while I uh, cut the semicircle. And then I'm going to keep it locked into that so that I can cut the semicircle of the designer paper. It's double sided, but that's all right. I don't, it's okay. So let's see. It's hard to see through all the plastic. Okay, that looks about right. It's tight. Now, if for some reason you get this messed up and it, it moves on you or you don't have the exact um, diameter, you can use what you're cutting away as a template as well. And I didn't press hard enough. Man, that's getting to be a real problem for me. The strength in my hands has just gone downhill so fast in the last year. Need to go see somebody about it, and I'm afraid they're going to tell me to stop crafting. Stop or stop so much. Now, I'm only doing this because I didn't press hard enough in the first place. Oh, I can tell you the diameter of this, too. I think it's in centimeters, but I'll let you know in inches and centimeters. So I had it set, the circle size is, hard to read, 14, where's my little arrow? Oh, there it is. Wow, I really have a hard time seeing 14, Fourteen and a quarter centimeters, which is in inches two and seven eighths. Uh, two and seven eighths, four and a quarter, four and a quarter, four and a quarter inch circle. Let me double check. Four and a quarter. Nope, maybe. Ah, uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, I'm sorry, five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. So I misread that. Five and three quarters. So hang on to these or keep your tool locked in for the decorator paper that will come a little bit later. Okay, so now I've got these done. And again, your base is going to be five and a half by five, score half inch on each side, five and a half and five. And then they're going to go right here. Like, oops. I just threw that into my coffee. <laughs> um, they're going to go into the lower corners, left and right, with the opening toward the center of the pocket page. And I need a, so 
something to help me see. So your eye is going to be drawn toward the center here. So um, I'm lining up this corner. I'm focused on this corner more than I am the edge. But it turns out everything looks nice and neat anyway. But if you've got some slop one way or the other, you want it to go toward the outside, not toward the inside where your eye is going to be drawn. These two edges are far enough apart that any discrepancy will be will visually disappear. But this will be very obvious if it's not um, exactly on. So I'm more focused on lining these two edges up than I am with the um, flap itself, because that's where your eye is going to be drawn. So I'm going to use this to help me locate that space and press this in. Okay, there we go. And we are going to have some inserts here. So there we go. It's a slightly teeny tiny bit off, but I think I can burnish that down and make it work. It's pretty, pretty darn close. I think it's because I free cut it. Okay, hang on to these or make sure your uh, tool is set. Okay, now for here, we're gonna, we're going to use uh, a nice big photo mat. So let's, let's do half inch. Let's do nine by five, that doesn't sound good. Let's start with a nine, and then we'll decide how deep to make it. Nine. Again, that this is gonna hold it all into place. So we've got a half inch on either side, so what I'm thinking is I wanna come down a half inch here, which is roughly here, I'll tell you what that is. Five and a half by nine. So this is nine by five and a half. It's going to go in here okay. and hold everything together. And then we've got a magnet here keeping everything together. All right, lovely. And what I think I'm going to do um, is is maybe partition this to be color blocked. Um, so it's not just one big giant image. It depends on what the Hey everyone, it's Stephanie, and we are going to start decorating what is now determined to be page one. So we're going to finish decorating page one. We just got done constructing it. So I'm going to show you how I cut the designer paper. So you saw me do a semicircle with a tool. And the way I cut the designer paper is you're going to um, basically do the same thing. You want to measure the height and width. So in this case, it's four and a half by five. So you're going to start with a four and a half by five. Then you're going to trim it down an eighth of an inch on height and width. So four and a half becomes four and three eighths and five becomes seven and seven eighths. So as you can see, as you hopefully let me get this position what you'll see is that there's an eighth inch off the width and an eighth inch off the height so once you have that you're going to push this into the pocket and if you don't have these pockets already on that it's even easier but you're going to push it into the pocket I'm going to bring it up just a little bit and you're going to look for your inset. So it should be a sixteenth of an inch down here and a sixteenth of an inch up here. So basically, let me use this white paper because it's so much easier to see. What you're trying to do is come push it all the way into the pocket. I wish this was taller. Let me see if I can find a piece of paper that's taller. It's not the right width. Um, once you have it all the way against both edges, then you're going to back it out until you see a sixteenth of an inch there and a sixteenth of an inch there. Draw your circle, cut it out, and then what you'll find, be 
because you took an eighth off height and width, now that you center it, you're going to have a nice frame all the way around your piece. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me let me see if I can find another piece of paper. It'll it'll make it easier. It needs to be white. Here we go. And it needs to be five, four and a half. Okay, this is flimsy paper. So now it's the same size as the pocket. So we're going to come off an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here. Okay. Now I'm going to tuck it into the pocket. I'm going to push it all the way to the corner. If I can. And then actually... We can do it this way. This will work too. You're going to line it up the way you want it. Man, I can't see today. Yeah, there we go. Put your tick mark here and here and then place it in the pocket. Line up those two tick marks with your cardstock there, like so. Let's go a little deeper here. There you go. Finish your line, cut it out. This cuts so easy because it's just like bond paper. I went a little nuts on the beginning. And I'm going to put a contrast in here. And then there's my arc. Okay. And it, it is exactly the arc um, that's here because we traced it, right? So even if this one's a little bit different than this one, you're going to do each one individually. Okay. So I did all that offline. I wanted to share with you how I did that. And if you don't have these already on, not glued down, um, that makes it even easier. If this is cut, then all you do is put the paper behind it, and then you flip it over and you look for your eighth inch, or, uh, eighth inch on height and width, and then flip it back over and trace it, and then cut it. So hopefully all that makes sense. If all that's too hard, just do a diagonal, and, um, well, first cut it one-eighth inch shorter and narrower then lay it down and cut your diagonal or use your fancy board or whatever you decide to do <clears throat> the that the the nice thing about um a diagonal and what makes it easy to place and what makes arcs difficult is they start to come around on themselves, which means even if you have a nice border down here, sometimes the top isn't quite right. But when you have a diagonal, it's just a straight line. So that's a much easier thing to accomplish. Or if you have a straight border, any design that starts to come back on itself um, like this, you have to worry about. So you always want to try to get your, semicircle in sort of a smile position, not all the way up to the halfway point, just below it. Okay, I think I've got all this inked, I'm ready to go. Yep. Just got done having dinner, some lovely fish, halibut. And we're having warm, dry weather here, so I gotta work fast. It's weird, we had such a wet, uh, uh, not wet, but, oh, you know what? I don't think I got this cut down enough. All that blibberty blot, mm, yeah, it's gonna work. It's a little bit bigger border than I had planned. Um, oh, I know, these were interfering with each other and I went back and trimmed it after I cut the paper, that's why. That makes sense, it's gonna work. 
Okay, so there's our pockets. So I selected this colorful image, um, which I believe is from, yeah, this is from the um, 12 by 12 scrapbook pad for the insert. So this is five and a half by nine, five and a half inches tall by nine inches. And it's gonna go in this pocket to keep this closed. So we don't have to have a magnet to keep this closed. So the back of that is going to be, the, the inside liner is going to be this pattern, which is the flip side of this. So that's side A, side B. These are going to go into the pockets and become the pocket liners. And I'm just going to check them out, dry fit, make sure they're what I want. And that probably needs a little bit off the top. And that should do it. I am using powder puff. It's not in chocolate malt. I switched my caps, but this is chocolate malt, even if you read mahogany here. I somehow got them mixed up. Okay, now this is going to go in. So basically, these are the two edges that are going to show. So I want to focus on getting glue here. And less so here, which makes it easier to slide in. And you don't have to worry about it peeling back because it's, it looks like a little. Okay, so now, put this in here to remind me, I've got a nice, I need to put some inserts in here too. And I definitely know I'm going to do 4 by 6 because I've got these beautiful cards. Um, but I may do something else. And there you go. So you can kind of get a view of what's going on. So there's a good chance that some color blocking will happen on this page just because of how large um, each one of the layouts are. Okay, So I'm going to clean up my workspace a little bit and straighten up and ink my designer papers. And when I get back, remember, hold that place if you're using a tool similar to this. There's something just like it that, um, I mean, you can use die cuts to run through your machine, but also um, Martha Stewart has a tool, EK Success. They're, they're pretty common. I like it um, because when I don't know what size I want, I can kind of test it where um, the die cuts are, you know, you're roped into the sizes that um, are measured, I mean, that are, uh, the dies are. So you can't, you know, kind of freeform, so to speak. Okay, enough of that. Let's take a break, and when I get back, um, we'll start decorating inside the pocket. But by leaving this glue free, that allows you to slip it into the pocket and um, ease it into its position without dragging a bunch of glue around. Oops, in theory. <laughs> So I just made a mess because it's not going in right. There we go. It's getting hung up on the bottom. There we go. I think there was a little bit of glue down there. Okay, now that made a big mess. So I'm going to use my little eraser here and take off this glue so I don't accidentally glue my pocket closed. It's not really made for that, but it'll work. It should just roll off for you, like it is for me. But don't leave it to get completely dry. All this is gonna be covered, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, now the rest of that looks okay. All right, now let's dry fit this one. Hopefully I have a little bit better time getting it into the pocket. Okay, and I can see I need to trim off some of this edge, and this is the side that I had trimmed originally. So I can see I need to trim off about a sixteenth of an inch. Let's try that. If it works, then we'll ink it and put it in. It's a little bit close to the edge, 
but I have such a large gap on this side. I'm not sure I want that much black to show over here. Let me think about that for a second. Let's ink it and see what it looks like. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it down as is. Even though it's a little far over on the pocket, visually, together, when it's close, I think it looks good. I'm trying not to make as big a mess out of this one. It was getting stuck on this, the hinge of the pocket down here, so I'm going to approach it from this direction. Let's see if I can't do a little bit better. There we go. Mm -hmm. My hands are covered in glue now. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, there's our insert. So that's what the top is going to look like. Now let's focus on getting some of these pieces in. So here, actually, let's go back and do this. This is going to go here, and this is from the patterns pack. And I really like this pattern. I think it's very pretty. Originally, I thought about doing it down here. Okay, looks good. I'm about due for some glue. Which you guys should be thinking about. Um, before you know it, we'll be in the season where we can't ship glue. I know she put that in the last shout out, but something to think about. Okay, that's it. Now for the, the sides, I want to do some color blocking. So I've got this on each side. And then we're going to use this to supplement it. But I'm actually, I think I'm going to use the flip side. Okay, I'm missing a strip. That's why I'm fumbling. I probably, knowing me, put it back up. <laughs> yep, there it is. I think. We'll see. Nope. It's not the same size. It doesn't have to be, but it does have to be the same height. It's too short. <laughs> Did I throw it away? Accidentally? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. So that's done. Let's work on the inside. So we are, so there's left, right flap, and there's the base. Then you open it, and then we've got a flap down here. We're going to cover this. And you're using this beautiful brown. From the patterns pack. Then we're taking, we're reintroducing the rest of this sheet. It's going to go like this. Do I have that right? That's not right. That's not the right size. It's gonna, I think, go on top. Sorry, I have to put my puzzle together. Oh, yeah, this goes here. This goes here. This is my problem. I keep losing the edge of the flap. So the smaller one goes here on the bottom half of the flap. 
and then turn it this direction. So all of this came off one sheet. So that's the insert for the cover. Here's where I split this in half. This is going to go here. This is going to go uh, just inside the pocket. Okay, here we go. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> I found my place. So let's start. And of course, we have our magnet here. Start by taking that off, backing off. <clears throat> trying to decide if there's a direction. I think I, there's just a lot of, um, Texture, or not texture, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, distressing on the edge. So I want that to go toward the bottom. Okay, this is going to be the little pocket liner. Looks like I've got it inked. It's going to slide slightly inside the pocket. Okay, I've uh, gone away and picked out all our papers and I've got them inked and I'm ready to go. So we're going to lay out the clock in the center of this layout. And this is obviously from the collection pack. So um, I trimmed down both the sides and made it 10 inches wide. I'm going to apply this on the upper flap. This will go to the center. This is the, the bottom part of the clock. And then this is, it needs to be trimmed to fit. This is reintroducing the same pattern that was up here on this flap right here. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, apply it just in that order. This cascading down this way, trimming this last one to fit as required. All right, another nice warm dry day today. So I gotta mind my glue. doesn't seem to I think I've got something stuck on the inside so I know I've got a pin here somewhere once in a while I gotta pull the pin out especially when it's dry like this it's just no humidity in the house there we go yeah it's a little clogged on the very very bottom I don't like to use the pen because, as my capper normally, because I always lose it. And I wind up dropping it on the floor, and then I find it with my feet. So um, it's a tool to help me when I get stuck, but I much prefer the cap that, um, that comes with this. Uh, we used to carry those. We don't anymore. Um, sorry. I shuffled some of my papers, now I'm not sure. Uh, we don't anymore, but you can still get the scrap at Scrap Perfect. Um, and that's S-C-R-A-P-E-R-F-E-T-F-E-C-T. -E -E um, they just sell retail now. They don't have a wholesale account, so we don't carry them anymore. But uh, if you do go to their site, pay attention to the size. Uh, and make sure that this part of the cap is going to fit the bottle that you intend it to go on. You only get the cap, you don't get a bottle. Okay. Every time I come across a clock, I try to think of using it in a slightly different way. So they are big, so they take up a lot of space if you're using a 12 by 12. Um, so I was just trying to, and I hardly ever have it so that I can get the whole thing. So I think this looks nice. This would have been hard to pull off in an 8x8. Impossible, actually. 
because it is 10 inches. The clock is about nine and three quarters wide. So there's just a tiny little bit of border around it on the left and right side. Let's come over. better. There we go. Try not to be as messy as I was yesterday. Sorry if I keep hitting the lamp. I mean the camera. Okay, so I'm going to fold this up so we can do this last bit. We're going to add this. So we'll have a little color block here too. And this is actually going on this flap. So I'm going to tell you what size this is. And then once you get this top piece in, everything else will flow from it. And then this is the piece that's going to have to be trimmed to fit. That's a little bit crooked. I'm trying to nudge it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, I need to cut a little bit more off this one. Not much. Okay, I'm gonna re ink that. I like that too. This is the cover sheet from the patterns pack. In fact, I think I like it better. Ooh, that's tough. Think. So we have that. Now this. I think I'll go. Let's make sure it still fits the right way. Let's try this way. It goes the other way. It goes this way. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Ooh, one last check. That's tough. I like it both ways, but I think I like the alternate side better. This was actually the cover of the patterns and solids. Uh, or backgrounds. Whatever, <laughs> whatever stamp we make calls them. Everybody's got a different name. Not the scrapbook pack. The not scrapbook pack.
Okay, that's a nice huge layout. I still think it'll look good with some pictures in there. I'm trying to find like here's a four by four. That would look nice with a couple of four by fours or four by fours up here, and then maybe a larger photo here, or even a circle cut photo so that um, the clock is still showing, but this part is on the base pocket page, so there's no seams. Um, so you can do quite a bit in the middle there too. Okay, let me get my two card inserts. These go back in here. This closes. Then I've got this insert. So yesterday when I was looking at this, I thought, hmm, I don't really like that um, as the finished page. I wanted something more of a statement here. So I took one of my cards that had a round ornament and I trimmed the top off. 